Hi, I'm Joe Hupsey, and I'm here with my colleagues Sharon Rosenberg and Kathleen Mead. They're the authors of a new book on UVM titled, appropriately enough, A Practical Guide to, the Universal, to Adopting the Universal Verification Methodology. So first, let me let my colleagues introduce themselves a little bit, and then we'll talk about the book. So Kathleen, t tell us a little about yourself. Hi, I'm uh, Kathleen Mead. I'm a uh, solutions deployment engineer here at Cadence. I've actually been at Cadence for 18 years, starting way back uh, when Valid first uh, acquired, or when Cadence and Valid merged. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been involved in system Verilog development at Cadence since uh, we started developing system Verilog. And I've also been involved in um, the initial releases of URM, the universal reuse methodology, mm -hmm. the OVM methodology, and now the UVM methodology. I, uh, my role at this company is, is uh, in working with strategic customers and uh, developing requirements for, for R&D as well as for our solutions methodology teams. Uh, and I, I work on uh, developing things for our field, field organization, developing workshops, training, and things like that. Terrific. Sharon? Hey, Sharon Rosenberg. I'm a solution architect uh, in Cadence. I'm leading the uh, methodology development, both in System Verilog E and uh, System C. Uh, I came part of the uh, acquisition of Vericity. I was mm -hmm. working in the R&D of Vericity at the time. When I came here, I started to create the URM, System Verilog methodology. We introduced a lot of new concepts into the what System Verilog uh, has. For example, the factory configuration mechanism, uh, field automation, and high-level encapsulation, environment, agents, passive mode, active modes, lots of good stuff. Then I worked with a mentor to uh, integrate that into uh, with AVM together into OVM. And when OVM was selected as a standard by Accelera, joined that effort, and now I'm working on, on building the UVM library. Terrific, okay. terrific. So uh, Kathleen, tell me about the book, and who's the intended audience for it? So the book is a introdu introduction and uh, a uh, practical guide for anybody who's interested in UVM. We, you know, once the announcement was made, we've had a lot of interest. Even mm -hmm. at DAC, we had many, many customers coming up and asking, "Okay, what is UVM? Should we get started with right. it?" Um, it's really intended towards, you know, three different levels of users. There's people who are brand new to the to the methodology, mm -hmm. even this the OVM methodology, and uh, it's a guide for them. Um, there's also users who've dabbled with the OVM library but haven't really followed the reuse methodology. So there's a lot of details about the reuse methodology required. And then uh, people who are advanced OVM users, there's uh, additional things on top of the, um, the OVM user guide and the UVM user guide that uh, we constantly get questions from customers. So we've added those chapters to the book as well. I see. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of... Uh there's been a lot of reference material already on ERM and OVM and such. Uh, um, so you're saying this has a lot even above and beyond that, and, and there's even a lot for the, the deeply experienced user, let's say. Right, right. As uh, Kathleen has mentioned here, so a, a lot of stuff about vertical reuse. Mm -hmm. uh, the way the user guide, for example, from Accelera works, it's all the way to interface verification component, but there's also module verification component at the target for a specific design, and we take that design and you integrate that into a larger system, it, it travels with it and help you verify that in a larger system, what people call vertical reuse. Mm -hmm. So that information is there. There's a lot of how do you configure such a system, uh, what's the right way to do reset, extending coverage, where do you put the coverage, things that we have not touched, uh, we're asked about it and we give these replies and answers to uh, users. Now we put that in a book that everybody could enjoy. So so even, again, just to, to emphasize, it, it really seems like you have the full spectrum. There's stuff for novices as well as the experienced user, somebody who's been who's using OVM today. There's something for them in this book. De definitely, definitely. We even, we even took a step further. We even introduced a little bit object-oriented programming for those who are not familiar with that. So we definitely start... From the beginning, CDV, how do you do randomness? Why randomness? How do you get more productive by deploying this technique? And then how you take it all the way to system level integration. You know, we even mentioned software UVCs. Yeah. Terrific. Now, how would you coach somebody who's coming from VMM? They have a VMM environment or they're experienced in VMM. How would they approach this book and, and, and benefit from it? Well, the, the, uh, as we described, the flow is pretty much uh, pretty much matching what they need need to do as well. 
uh, VMM users basically have some of the concept implemented in a slightly different way. We would recommend to start reading the intro mm -hmm. uh, when we introduce the concept and the terminology and uh, they could quickly map what they're using, some of the things they're using, mm -hmm. into the UVM terminology and, and get aligned with the mainstream, start using using that. Then there is the uh, building blocks, the, the infrastructure of the library itself. You want to read that. That is different than the VMM uh, in, in some ways. And from there, it just goes to interface UVC, that level of encapsulation that uh, is a shortcoming in uh, VMM, but we have that in system UVC and so on. So it's basically organized uh, very well for these users as okay, well. Now let's say, um, coming back to the OVM user, the ERM user, there's still quite a few environments that are using ERM today. Um, what does UVM give that person, whether you're using OVME, OVM System Verilog, OVM System C? You know, why would, why would they move to UVM? And, you know, it's kind of, it's new, right, in some sense. Uh, so, so on one side, yes, it's the same methodology, the same proven concept that can serve you there. On the other hand, now it's the entire industry. It's all the vendors out there supporting that library, testing it and trying things out mm -hmm. for you. And uh, the third thing to mention is, of course, the innovations. The innovation currently, the way I see it and anticipate, are done only in uh, UVM. So you don't want to put yourself in a corner where things are in improved and more features are added and you cannot enjoy this. So uh, definitely it's, it's, a, it's a good decision to move to UVM. The switch itself is very simple and we recommend whenever it's practically for you as a user to move mm -hmm. there, just move to UVM. Right, and one, one question I, I mean to ask about the legacy. So as I understand, you know, uh, Cadence and I know the other vendors have talked about, you know, they'll support the whatever the current snapshot is of OVM well, mm -hmm. forever, basically, and then, you know, new innovations, as you were saying, will be on UVM. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So there's, you know, a lot, uh, there's a lot in the UVM methodology today, but there were also topics that weren't part of the initial version of UVM that the Accelera Committee is, is focusing on and uh, working on right now. I see, I see.